Hey there, this is Steph from Coffee Like Media, and I am here today with Beck Johnson, senior trainer of Hindenburg, and we are going to show you how to make the audio in your videos sound better using Hindenburg. Hey, Beck. Hey, Steph. Uh, right. Yes, let me just show you how to do this. So yes. we are going to open up a video in Hindenburg. We can go up here and click open. And then we want to select our format. So we go down here to format and we can select video. Now my videos show up. So I'm going to pick this one here. Click open. So here we've got our video. A video is on this track and the audio is on this track. We can also see our video down here. I can click in this region and make it bigger. I can also just grab this here and move it completely. I can put it on a se separate screen if I want to and uh, work with it that way. And the one thing that is really important to know is that you're just going to be massaging the sound in this. You're not actually going to be able to cut the video. Correct. Yep. We're just working with audio only. All right. Well, Beck, this is all well and good, but why would people need this ability? So you can use this for like, let's say you're going to have a YouTube video. You can just make it sound that much more professional mm -hmm. because you're going to do transcription in here and add things like chapters and timestamps and you can do ambience and cleanup and things like vocal processing, noise reduction, equalization, things like that. That's a really good point. So you don't have to hop from tool to tool. You can stay within Hindenburg to make your video sound amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Nice. So how do we do that? So this is how I would do this in, in sort of order. The first thing I would do is click on the, the region here because what I'm going to do is transcribe. Go up to tools and down to transcribe. And I do have multiple speakers here. So I'm going to select that in English and click OK. Awesome. Can you show us what the transcription looks like? Yes. Yes. So we go up here to view and go down to the manuscript. And here it is. We can make this bigger if we want to look at it. Now, what we can do here is we can change the name. This is Jonathan. And we click enter. And then every time Jonathan is speaking, nice. it will now automatically be on his track. And now this person is named... We're not sure. We're going to call her Lefty and <laughs> click enter. And now Jonathan and Lefty are on their own tracks. So another thing we can do here in the manuscript is cor correct the text. And that would be for subtitles for like YouTube. Hey, Beck, in that second line, it says, I'm Jonathan from what does that say? It says from Hamburg oh. and it's supposed to say Hindenburg. So what should do we, we correct do? that? We should correct. We that. can correct that. I can then just hit enter. And when it turns pink, that means I can start typing. So I can just write Hindenburg, click enter, and that's corrected. Sweet. If we want to change more than just a word, so this right here is actually supposed to say Deidre from Capshaw. I can just select this whole part here, click enter, and type in what it's supposed to say. Click enter, and we're done. Now, what we know, Steph, as audio editors, podcast editors, is mm -hmm. it is so key to have everybody on separate tracks because you want to be able to change everybody's track individually if you need to. So we're going to do that now. We're going to separate this into a couple different tracks. And we can click on the region here, go up to tools, click on split by speaker, and check that out. It has figured out lefties down here Jonathan is up here Definitely. and so another thing that I always do on every show that I work on is I will auto level everything after I've cut mm -hmm. everything up so the way to do that is to just select all of our regions by clicking option command click that selects everything and now we can see that everything has been selected here we go back up to our tools and we can do auto level which is also command l and so now this makes sure that everybody's audio is just as loud as everybody else's, including each region should be 
just as loud as so this region here will be just as loud as this one and this one and this one and this is really important for things like if you get into what you're talking about and you kind of move further back from your microphone mm -hmm. it's just not going to be as loud as if I'm sitting here the entire time different things like that so that's a really great feature to be able to do auto leveling for all the regions okay Beck this is really helpful but I like color can we add like differentiate the two speakers from each other by using yes. color? Yes. So let's just select everything on Jonathan's track. I'm going to do that by hitting Command A, and then I can right click on the region and do Show Hide Colors. Yes. And let's do this nice color here. Let's go a little bit further, and um, I notice one thing here that I know, I happen to know that this is the Hindenburg theme song right here at the beginning. So, and if you look down here, it says in that first trip, and then Jonathan introduces himself. So what's happening here is there's just a little bit of narration at the end of this music. And it's just sort of like a news piece where somebody says the, the phrase in, in that first trip. So we want to get rid of that. I'm going to just make a break here and put this on the music track down here. Now, what I can do to get rid of this in the manuscript and in the region itself is select this region, right click on it, go down to properties, under display transcription, I can unclick that so that it will remove this from the transcription down here. And then this region name will go back to the track name. So now let's say we want to add things like ambience or sound effects. I can do that by going up to view, go down to sounds, and this is where our sound library lives. So uh, let's say that I want to add something like a train in the background. I can click type in train and I've got all these trains to choose from here. So I'm just going to pick this first one and I can select it and drag it in. And look, I've got train sounds. Beck, quick question. When you pull up the sound menu, can you hear the different sounds before you select one? Yep, you can go through and play all of these. There's this little play icon here, and you can click through them and listen to them before you put them in the, in the play one, session. Play one, play one. Let's do this <laughs> diesel freight. It's going to download for a second, and then... There's oh, our satisfying. train. Thank you. I want the <laughs> we, I want this to play the entire rest of the time we're talking. I'm just I know, play right? this the whole time. <laughs> so Beck, which effects do you recommend that folks use? Yeah, so I always do, almost always do three effects on every time there is a voice speaking. So let's just go into Jonathan here. The first thing I would do is add noise reduction and that does a couple of different things if there's some noise that you might not hear like let's say his computer fan kicks in you don't really know you don't really notice it or think about it but it might be there and this will get rid of that it just kind of in my opinion tightens up the sound a little bit makes makes the track sound a little bit better a little bit cleaner easier to hear now the reason why we add that first is because now everything we do after that is going to follow the noise reduction meaning we want to get rid of a thing before we enhance the thing. So the thing with noise reduction is we need to let Hindenburg analyze it for a little bit uh, so that it can de determine where the noise floor is uh, before we make our adjustments. So I'm going to just hit play and we'll watch this little area here. Yeah, I'll cut, I'll try to keep it to the super short story because I think a lot of us know that an entrepreneurial journey, it can be quite convoluted. <laughs> so I'll keep it to um, the fact. There it is. So you can see this little white line here. This is our noise floor. So we can adjust it if we want to. But like I said, Hindenburg does a great job at, you know, kind of giving us a guide of where it typically will live. But use your ears and you can determine whether or not you need to turn this up or down. But this is how you get rid of noise. Now, the second thing that I add is voice profile. I add this to every show I ever work on. I add the generic voice profile on. And now what this is, 
and click OK and that's it. What this is, it's just equalization. It is a sort of a snapshot of broadcast quality style voices all made into one generic voice profile, but it sounds really, really good. So the word generic is just means that apply it to everybody. Mm. It doesn't matter what kind of voice you have. It just sort of makes everybody sound a little bit like more warm, full, broadcasty. Now what I add after that is a little bit of a compressor. So a compressor brings the quietest parts of the recording up a little bit and the highest peaks down a little bit. So it sort of just squishes everything together or compresses them. So I learned this from radio folks to turn it up to two and then just back it off just a little bit. Again, this is just a little bit of compression. Some people really like to crank the compressor. My preference is not to use your ears and decide what you like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got the audio ready, we've got the transcript ready, and we want to be totally YouTube ready. And to optimize the YouTube channel, we need solid timestamps or chapters. Beck, how do we do that in Hindenburg? Yes. Okay, so let's say we want to add a chapter right here, which is really a timestamp. We can set the playhead here, and the playhead is this vertical line. Mm -hmm. And I can hit shift command enter and up here we have a marker down here. It says marker three and we've got it marked by this icon here. I can double click on this and let's say Jonathan is talking about compression and enter and there is our marker. It's up here now in our timeline and it's down here in the manuscript. And this will show up like how you see them on all the YouTube videos mm -hmm. where you can kind of scroll through and find each subject. Yeah. It's also really nice because you can share by timestamp. So you can actually post anywhere on social media or on your website or things from a specific time using the timestamps on YouTube. Yep. So these can be, can really help you micro share your podcast video. So let's say we've got a whole bunch of chapters now. Where, where do they live? We can go up here to view and go down to chapters, click on that and this is where our chapters live. Okay, so now we've got the timestamps. How do we get them into YouTube? Yep, so we've got our chapters window open here. Mm -hmm. And this blank area at the very top, we just right click on that, copy as text, and then we go and paste that into the description in our YouTube video. And this is really important. There formatted for YouTube. So I don't if, if you all haven't done YouTube timestamps before, you have to do a very specific format, especially in that first line for the time when you're starting at 0000. If you don't have those four zeros, all none of your timestamps will actually show up clickable. <laughs> and so there's just like text that does nothing. So it's really important that Hindenburg formats it so that it works. So you don't have to do any of that. So now you know how to brighten up your video audio in Hindenburg, use the transcripts, get it fully YouTube ready. Thanks to Beck. Thank you, Beck. You're welcome. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> Soviet Union has admitted that an accident has taken place at a nuclear power station at Trinidad in the Caribbean.